cares about you or your stuff. All they want to know is what's in it for them. I'm Brad Goss, and I'm here with Justin Popovich today. Hey. We're talking about marketing and sales copy and how to, how to promote yourself or sell your products, and uh, Justin had some interesting points to bring up, so uh, I'm going to let you start off. Yeah, but the idea is that the way Brad kicked it off is exactly right. Uh, people, when they come, to, whether we're talking about your personal blog where you're selling yourself or, or products or services you're selling in your business, uh, bottom line is that people don't really care about you or your company or the story behind it or even the products themselves. They actually care about what it's going to help them get in their lives. And, and think about this for yourself, right? You may have been at a trade show or at an event where you're hearing people talk about what they do or some of the stories they've been on. You, you may be, you know, you may be listening to the story in the moment, but ultimately you're trying to relate in your head how this particular product, service, idea, whatever, is going to help you get from step A to B or C, whatever it is you're working on. You don't really care about that person in their life because you can't experience what they're going through. You can only experience what you're going through. And automatically your mind goes to, how can I use this? How can, how can I use it for me and, and get the most benefit and leverage in my life? And so you got to think about that as a marketer, as a business owner, um, how do I need to change maybe the way I spin or market my stuff to get into the head of that person, understanding that they don't really care about me, they care about themselves. So now, now let me talk to that person, let me talk to that person in, in their goals and where they're trying to get to. Yeah. A lot, of t a lot of times you see people get focused on telling their story or how big their company is, how many employees they have, or how, you know, all these other things as, as, as credibility boosters or bragging points or whatever they might be. And those actually make up probably about 5 or 10%, I think, of someone's buying decision. It's more about how does this affect me? How does it help me? And I know when I make buying decisions, it's always that. It's like, I'm buying this because it's going gonna, it's gonna to do this for me or it's going to help me with this. And I think that, um, you know, traditional marketing training, they tell you, don't focus on your features, focus on your benefits. And your sure. benefits are the, the, um, the what's so good about that the, the, you know, the, or the what's in it for me question. Uh, and, I, and I think that, uh, that the more people focus on what's in it for the customer instead of listing, you know, if you're selling a piece of software, don't list all the, all the functions and all the things it does. Sure, there's a place for that in the tech specs, but you need to tell the customer uh, what it does for them, what each feature of the software does to improve their lives or their business. Yeah, uh, focusing on the benefits. And I, the specific example Brad and I were talking about before we turned the camera on is if you've ever been to a, an event, a, a conference of some sort, maybe there were some speakers or a lineup or a panel or whatever, um, you may be one of those people that takes all kinds of notes, but ultimately, how much of those notes do you actually use? And if you've been there, I'm sure you probably realize you use very little of that information. And I go back in my head and I think about even an event, you know, the WordCamp event we, we did, I go back in my head, I don't really remember what was said so much by each one of those speakers, but at the end of each talk, I felt a certain way. And some speakers inspired me, like, wow, okay, this guy's really involved in social media, I want to go check that out. Um, other people, I was like really turned off just because it didn't vibe with me, but ultimately, I didn't remember anything about them or their story. It was more about, okay, how can I use this particular feeling or this emotion that I got from what they said to help me get, you know, to some of these goals I'm trying to hit. So, really, it was very little about the information. Some of the uh, professional speaker trainers out there use a, use a phrase that I think is ridiculous, but um, they say, data doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. And essentially what the, yeah, message that they're, what the message that these guys are giving, these are guys that train other speakers you know, to go out sure. on, the, on, the, on the seminar circuit or whatever it might be, and they're actually trained to not worry about the content that they deliver as much as the feeling that they leave behind with people. If people uh, leave a seminar or leave your, your speaking engagement energized or inspired or, or um, just feeling better than they did when they got there that morning, they got value. Uh, and, and I'm not a firm believer in that. I do like to deliver data when I'm actually speaking. I think that that is important, especially in the topics that I cover. I like to actually dump a lot of data on people. But there's definitely that, that, um, that mix. You definitely have to mix in a little bit of humor and a little bit of inspiration and a little bit of, of you know, um, uh, juice into what you do in order to make people enjoy the talk than just dumping data. It's true. Yeah. But the, I guess the other thing to think about here is that if you realize and actually truly embody the idea that people don't care about you or your stuff, um, it's a pretty empowering realization because now you can actually stop worrying so much about the judgments or what people are thinking about you. 
if you have a couple ideas that are kind of out there and you want to try them and you're a little worried about judgments or criticisms from people, truth of the matter is, they still don't care. <laughs> they, um, they may look at you and, and laugh at you or, or judge you for a, sh a short minute or two, but then they're back into their lives again. They're, they have all their own worries and stuff they're working on, so that should immediately help you reduce some of your stress around maybe avoiding taking some action, things we've talked about in the past. Because again, they're not focused on you, they're focused on themselves. So I, I like to use that for myself personally. If I'm a little bit nervous about taking some action, remind myself that people don't care and off I go. It really works.